This is The Top, where I interview entrepreneurs who are number one or number two in their industry in terms of revenue or customer base. You'll learn how much revenue they're making, what their marketing funnel looks like, and how many customers they have. I'm now at $20,000 per talk. Five and six million. He is hell-bent on global domination. We just broke our 100,000 unit soul mark. And I'm your host, Nathan Latka. Okay, Top Tribe, this week's winner is Charlie Daggs, okay? He was a middle manager at a manufacturing company. He wants to break free, and he won the $100 I give out every Monday. For your chance to win, simply subscribe to the podcast on iTunes right now, and then text the word Nathan to 33444 to prove that you did it. Nathan Latke here. This is episode 562. Coming up tomorrow morning, you'll learn from Devin, who founded Insight Pool, which is just nearing 300 grand in monthly recurring revenue, helping 100 big brands find influencers. Good morning, guys. Nathan Latke here. Our guest today is Nick Caruso. He's one of the C's, the CEO and founder of Illuminetto, and specifically more about his background quickly before we jump in. He was vice president of sales in, at an Eastern US and Canada at Notable Solutions. He was there for many years, about six years. Before that, he was at Cofax as a federal sales manager, and before that, a project manager at a large company. And also, previous to that, between 1998 and 2002, served the country in the United States Marine Corps as a captain. Very good. So, Nick, thank you for your service. Are you ready to take us to the top? Sounds fantastic. I'm ready. All right. Good. Tell us first what Illuminato does and how you generate revenue. Um, so, we're a, a SaaS company. Uh, we charge a monthly subscription, and we're specifically focused on helping sales rep uh, get more business. And um, t- tell us how you do that. Like, Tell us about your last paying customer. Uh, sure. So uh, um, I've been a, in the technology field for about 20 years now. Uh, I've been a sales professional for the last 15 years. I've used a bunch of um, tools out there, mainly CRM systems like Salesforce.com, et cetera. And during my career, I didn't really find a, a tool that really helped me um, not only get more leads, but more specifically win more deals. So uh, we basically just focus on um, helping people get those leads, but we really focus on Once you've got that customer, how can you convert that customer into a win? Um, And we've got a very unique business model where we're focusing on the individual sales rep, not the actual company themselves. Makes good sense. Um, What what do you, what, again, tell me specifically though, like what's the name, the company that just most recently signed up? Um, I, I, we have a lot of companies that compete with each other, so I'm not going to give any sort of name companies, but um, we have uh, lots of Fortune 100 um, you, uh, sales reps in, within those companies. Uh, okay. Again, we don't focus on the actual uh, uh, logo account itself. It's the actual individual sales rep at those accounts taking out their own credit card and paying for the service. Okay, that's what I was going to ask you. So who's actually paying? It's it's the actual person. This is not like a business expense. Um, yeah, you know, it's interesting. We've uh, We've just been out for about six months now. Um, and our go to market strategy is a, a bottoms up approach. Um, we do on, on occasion and I will have long term vision of the logo company themselves, you know, paying the 20,000, 100,000 a year licensing fee. But right now, our go to market strategy is just getting the individuals in those companies wanting to sign up and just pay for it themselves. Okay. So um, we've been very successful so far at that. Uh, okay. So what are you at currently, uh, in terms of total customer signed up? Um, So we have about over a thousand customers signed up right now. Okay. Um, That represents over 500 different logo companies themselves. We've got some logos that are, um, you know, 20, 30, 50 sales reps. Um, um, That's the distribution right now. Okay. So that's the thousand logos, not, not salespeople at the companies. It's a thousand. No, it's actually a thousand users. um, And it represents 500 um, logos. 700. Yeah, several hundred. Several hundred. Okay, got it. Very good. Um, and then, so you take us, before we get too many into kind of too much into where you are today, you said you were founded, what, about a year ago in 2015? We were founded, uh, yes, we were founded in, in mid-2015. We went through about a year of uh, development and beta testing, and we released in the summer of 2016. Okay, so here's a question for you, Nick. A lot of entre- starting entrepreneurs in software ask this. You know, you're building your business, you're developing it for about a year, which means you have costs before you have a dollar in sales. How much did you sink into the business before you started selling? We sunk in um, several hundred thousand dollars before getting started. Okay, and was that? I mean, where did that come from? Was that all you, or did you raise capital? 
Uh, so we raised, uh, we went through an angel round and we raised about 700 K worth of angel okay. investment. And that got us through the initial development, initial beta testing phase, uh, and into, um, the rest of 2016. Walk us through how you were able to raise that, you know, pre-revenue, pre-product. What did you use your kind of history? Did your co-founders have, you know, successful exits? How'd you do it? Yeah. So I have, uh, it was three co-founders. So it was myself and two other co-founders. Uh, we all previously worked together. One was a C, a former CFO with, uh, several successful exits, um, both, uh, private and public. Um, the other one was a chief marketing officer at my previous company. So we all previously worked together. We've all had successful exits in different companies. Um, and this was our first opportunity as actual founders of, of an organization before we were always in a supporting role. Um, so we put in our own money and started the business. And we also had, um, about five, well, specifically five other, uh, angel investors, um, uh, ranging anywhere from, you know, a small amount of money to several hundred thousand dollars. All folks in DC, all folks in DC, um, all folks that uh, previously knew us in the past and we're absolutely sure of our success. That's good. So three co-founders when you launched, what's the team size today? Um, we've got a dedicated team of four people. Okay. That's a relatively small. And we, hey, uh, if, rev if revenue, if revenue per employee is high, man, you'd rather, you'd have rather have no employees, right? <laughs> yeah, no, you're absolutely right. So, uh, you know, like any startup, we're doing what it takes to, uh, uh, to be successful and keep the business going. Um, so keep, keeping it a, a relative, relatively small size team and, uh, and working with contractors for other things. And what is the, so you have a bunch of different kind of pricing plans just for clarity's sake. Let's just talk about an average. What, what's the average kind of that a customer is paying you per month? Average is $30 per user per month. Okay. Um, so to get MRR, can I take a thousand users times 30 to get about 30 grand in MRR today? Um, out of those a thousand, some of them are, are free. So it's a freemium model that we have. Okay. So, um, I'm not going to disclose, you know, right now what that conversion rate is. Um, but I can tell you that we're profitable at this point. Um, um, so we're breaking, you know, we're, we're breaking even profitable. Uh, we're able to keep the business going and, you know, we're extremely excited with the success that we've had. Um, and we've had almost zero marketing to date. Um, and so it's a completely viral growth pattern and, um, we're actually intentionally not trying to grow too fast. Uh, although six months is forever in a startup, uh, we still want to perfect the product and still get that word of mouth, that viral growth model. Well, where are you guys at? Nick, give us some sense of size. I thought when I asked how many customers you had, you said a thousand, but it sounds like those are a mix of free and paying customers and you don't want to get that conversion rate, which is fine. But where are you guys at in terms of general size, in terms of monthly recurring revenue? I mean, are you talking five grand, 10 grand, 20 grand? I, I am not prepared to disclose that. Okay. Um, I, I, can, I can tell you though that I mean our, our focus right now, and I think you know for a lot of startups is you know focusing on customer success, focusing on um, you know we're much more interested in getting the customers that are you know evangelists that are spreading the word within the organizations than you know trying to get um, a, a targeted MRR focus right now. So um, I know for a lot of uh, I mean, we're not pursuing VC money right now. Um, so we're not in this. Yeah, Nick, I'm not, I'm not assuming you are or that you're desperate or that you're bleeding cash or anything. I'm just simply interested. I mean, one of the things that's interesting is you said you're break even, which is very difficult for a company that raised a bunch of capital pre pre revenue, because that means you're basically what you're saying is, I mean, if you're cash flow positive or you're break even, that would be basically saying you still have all that investment in the bank. So you have about 700 grand still in the bank. Um, that's why I'm asking questions around some of these numbers. So like for someone listening right now that it has, has, is thinking about launching their own company, they have, other, you know, three other friends that are, you know, other marketing teams uh, and past companies they're with, they're thinking about launching their own business like you, they're following your story. Where should they, you know, it's helpful to understand kind of where you're at six months in versus where they're at six months in, you know, after they release the product. Well, one word of advice I would have, you know, in regards to that is, uh, and I, I, we were certainly knew about this going into it, but, um, you always want to be embarrassed about your first release. You always want to get your first release out as soon as possible. And the fact that it took us nine months to get that initial release out was just way too long. Yeah. Uh, so in hindsight, if I were to look back on that, you know, we, obviously we were, we had a lot of money invested in development. Um, 
And, uh, you know, we, we had a, a pretty good version one out the door, but I think we could have gotten a version one that was not perfect. It didn't, you know, didn't exactly meet all of our objectives, but we should have gotten that version one out a lot earlier and started getting that user feedback a lot earlier. Yeah. Um, I know you don't want to be specific. It would help though to get some kind of range. I mean, do you have more or less than a hundred paying customers? Oh, we have more than a hundred. Okay. But, but less than a thousand. So somewhere in between there. Correct. Yes. Okay. Got it. Um, all right, cool. Do you have enough of a sample size yet to know what gross like customer turn is monthly? And if so, teach us some lessons around how you're retaining customers. Um, yeah. So, so one of the metrics I've always was curious about, and, and, and I'm new to the complete SaaS model itself is the concept of a churn rate. So there's churn rate over your freemium accounts and there's churn rate over, churn rate over your premium. Yeah, your freemium. I'm just, I just care about paying customer base. Yeah, so our, our churn rate over paying customers right now is surprisingly zero. Um, we haven't had a single paying customer drop off yet. Okay, and in the past so. six months. Correct. Okay, got it. Um, and that's, uh, and I don't, I mean, it, it, that sounds impressive, but also we only have a hundred, you know, a you know, hundred plus paying customers. So. It's um it's a small sample size, and out of those 100 paying customers, uh, we're doing everything we can to retain those customers. As far as um, having um, uh, bi monthly releases, ensuring that um, every the, every two weeks when we do those releases, we have those features in there that they've asked for, and so we really want to make the sense that this product is their product, not our product. And what are you? I mean, how are you guys finding these customers? Are you spending any money on paid acquisition yet? Or are you guys just hustling, or what? We did an initial push back in July doing our uh, July and August with some paid advertising. Um, we did get a, a, a tremendous amount of customers that came in and uh, what is Nick, my audience, my, I mean, I, I'm asking this, my audience will grill you on Twitter. If I don't ask when they, they hear words like tremendous, they want actually to know kind of like quantity. Can you give us a range when you say you did initial pushing a tremendous customers? That oh, mean yeah, that's a great point. Five yeah, or 10,000. So we consider ourselves a B2B product. So it's not like, you know, it's not like a B2C. So from a B2B perspective, we had, we had, thousands of people coming in under the freemium model. Okay. Um, and these are, these are sales reps that, that we were advertising on LinkedIn, et cetera. They were coming in, they were signing up and, um, but they weren't sticking around. Um, and what we found to be much more successful is a viral growth model, which is um, getting a customer or getting a, a sales rep at a logo to come in. Let's say it's a, an IBM an Oracle or whatever to come and start using the product. And then we have the capability of teams within the product itself. So you can start inviting team members into using the product. And from there, that's how we get that viral okay, so growth. How, how do you get the first person at IBM to start using you? Um, it's leveraging our own networks via LinkedIn. It's um, contacting them directly and then asking our existing users any sort of references that they have. Got it. Very good. Okay, good. Let's go into the uh, the famous five year. A lot of the other kind of CAC, ARPU, LTV metrics. It sounds like you're still pretty early for some of those. Um, but talk to me about uh, the famous five year. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Um, right now, it's built to last. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? So the one that I... Um, well, one I'm interested in right now is uh, Drew Houston from Dropbox. And it, why, why are you focused on him? Just that, that business model that Dropbox initially had um, was, was interesting. So, uh, you know, they weren't doing a lot of advertising. They had more of a viral growth model. I thought something was interesting regarding their own uh, viral path was they initially were giving dollar discounts to users to do a, um, a referral. And they found out that that wasn't working at all. And uh, we've had the exact same experience. You know, if we said, oh, we'll give you $5 off uh, if you refer someone, that didn't really incentivize anybody. So we've had some interesting parallels associated with that from that experience. So I found the Dropbox experience to be most parallel to what we're doing. Um, great. So what, I mean, they have to shift it to giving away free storage. What are you giving away for free to drive kind of viral economics? So we have uh, features within the product um, that, we're giving more of that capability away by, by using the product or by, by adding those referrals. Got it. Okay. Number three, besides your own, do you have a favorite online tool like acuity scheduling? Um, not per se an online tool. I'm, I'm, I'm both a developer as well as a sales professional. So, uh, a tool that I found was interesting recently was, um, API.ai. I think Google acquired them. So it provides uh, natural language processing, artificial intelligence for, uh, technologies for, to, to do a wide range of things that you can do with them. So 
for example, we're looking at building a bot, like a Slack bot, and providing that natural language processing capability. So it's, a, it's an online tool, but it's for developers. Number four, yes or no, do you get eight hours of sleep every night? Uh, absolutely no. And what's your situation? You're married, single, do you have kids? Uh, married with kids. Okay, how many? Two. Two little ones. All right, and how old are you, Nick? I am 40. Okay, so last question. Take us back 20 years. What do you wish your 20-year-old self knew? Um, a whole bunch. Um, I, I wish uh, my 20-year-old my self uh, knew that starting up a company um, wasn't as hard um, as, it, as, uh, as it is. It's a lot easier than I thought it would be. Uh, and I wish I had done it a lot earlier. Top Tribe, there you have it from Nick, one of the founders of Illuminetto, wishing he started his first company earlier. They launched just recently with a $700,000 round of funding. That was about uh, about a year and a half ago. They're now serving over 100 customers. Again, an ARPU of about 30 bucks per user per month going after big logos. It's too early on a lot of the economic stuff, but they're based in D.C. Again, focused on helping uh, these uh, sales reps close more deals faster and win more with their team of four. Nick, thank you for taking us to the top. Great. Thank you, Nathan. If you enjoyed Nick today, go back and listen to Ken Marlin yesterday. His M&A firm, Marlin & Associates, did $1 billion with a B in 2016 transactions. They make money by taking 3%. Top Tribe, I love giving away free money. I feel like Oprah giving away cars, and I have something special for you today. How many of you have heard our super sharp guests talk about success they've had with Facebook and Google Ads? Well, all of you listening right now, yes, if you're listening, you get $100 in free AdWords. Here's how you get it, okay? Again, thanks for listening. Get the free $100 from Google, right, when you sign up with my website host provider, HostGator. Go sign up now to get your free money, HostGator.com forward slash Nathan. Again, that's hostgator.com forward slash Nathan. Okay, Top Tribe, I'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. And don't forget, before you listen to any other episodes, subscribe on iTunes right now for your chance to win 100 bucks every Monday.